glad you could join me tonight. Tonight is all about cauliflower. This purple here is graffiti cauliflower. This yellow is flame star cauliflower. And the white is twisted cauliflower. I'm gonna show you several dishes and what you can do with all this cauliflower. We're going to serve it up two different ways, roasted, and then we're going to ferment some. So come with me to the kitchen and let's get going. So first, wash your cauliflower and you want to slice it so that it roasts is really well and it's flat on either side. So once you get it sliced, then lay it in your pan I'm also gonna do some beets. Uh, we love roasted beets. So I'm gonna spray my pan with some olive oil and then lay the cauliflower flat down. And it really helps to roast when you can get it flat like this. And we're gonna put it on 425 degrees for 15 minutes. And then we'll take it out and flip it and we'll put it back in the oven for another 10 to 15 minutes or until you get it as brown as you like it. I'm adding some salt and some olive oil, a good generous amount. I'll flip it over and add some to the other side also. And we love to eat it just plain and roasted. This first dish is eating it on a green salad which we tried for the first time, and it gave that salad excellent flavor. So here's some garlic and herb rub. I use this on about everything. Can't go wrong with garlic. I also gathered some rosemary from outside and sprinkled it on there. I love that rosemary roasted it has that nice little crunch and just gives it a pop of flavor so if you don't have a rosemary bush i would highly suggest one i use rosemary on a lot of dishes so this is coming out of the oven after 15 minutes and i'm going to flip it over and put it back in the oven for another 10 to 15 minutes or until it gets as brown as I would like on the edges. The rest of my salad, I've got some cherry tomatoes that are still making. These are those little birdie series that's in my container by my back door. And these onions are some warrior bunch of onions that I'm growing in a root pouch out by my raised beds gardens. Then these are some English peas, Mr. Big Pea. I love to throw those in a salad. And I also will put some of my fermented carrots in there. This was the first time I have did fermented carrots. And I think I shared that video a couple weeks ago. We have really enjoyed these with our salads or just as a snack. So I'll start with my lettuce that we gathered from the raised beds. Just make a little bed there with the lettuce. Maybe cut it up just a little bit. And this is some red leafy lettuce and some romaine. Just gonna put all my good veggies on there. Sprinkle it with those peas and those onions and those carrots and then top it with that roasted beet. And then your roasted cauliflower. It just gives the salad a such unique flavor. And then top it off with some garlic infused olive oil that I made earlier in the year too. 
Let's see how Mr. Hoffs likes this. He always does my taste test. Eating fresh out of the garden today. Roasted cauliflower in your salad. You thank me later. Okay, now we're gonna do some soup. So I've got some Italian sausage here. I'm just gonna brown. And this soup is like the kale soup that I made a couple weeks ago. And here is my Christmas present from Mr. Haas. It is a vegetable chopper. It's quite a little learning curve here, but I'm getting the hang of it and I, I do like it. It'll chop up potatoes, onions, pretty much anything. So I've got my sausage brown. I'm gonna put it on some paper towels and let it drain while I brown those onions in the same pan. So in this soup, we're not gonna put potatoes. We're gonna put roasted cauliflower instead. And I also didn't add the kale. A lot of you said y'all did not like kale, so I wanted to show you what it looks like without the kale. So just as in the other recipe, washed my cauliflower, sliced it, seasoned it, roasted it in the oven on 425, halfway through, flip it. I did add some fresh basil to this, a little bit different. You can't go wrong with roasting cauliflower. Just add whatever seasons you like. Again, halfway through, you want to flip it and get that other side going. And then once this is done, I will cut off the uh, big, thick middle pieces because I don't want that in my soup. I just want the little florets. So I'll just go around the center and cut that piece out. Save it for a snack later. Just coarsely chop up the rest of it. You don't want it mush. And by roasting it, it saves its texture. So it's not mushy like a blended soup. So to my chicken broth and my sausage and my onions, I will add the cauliflower and give it a stir. And I didn't throw away this part. Look at that rosemary on there. Then I add some heavy cream. And that is it. Now, if you want to add kale to it, this is the point where you would add the kale. If you're having trouble trying to figure out what to do with all that cauliflower in your garden, what about this roasted cauliflower toscata soup? Put your little bunch of onion on it as a garden share. Mix that in. A little bacon. Hmm. You can thank me later. Hey, Mama Hoss here. I have got abundance of cauliflower and I was looking to see what I could do with it. And there was a recipe to ferment it. I've already done some carrots and that turned out really well. So today I'm gonna to try some carrots and some cauliflower. Now I gathered these carrots and cauliflower this morning out of the garden. Washed them really well, cut the carrots into thin slices, trimmed up the cauliflower. And this is really simple. You need your quart jar. I've got a big one here. Um, for this, I got three tablespoons of salt, my uh, picklin pipe, my jar lid. And the recipe says to use fresh ginger, fresh garlic, and celery seed. Well, I don't have any fresh garlic or fresh ginger, so I'm just gonna use some ginger powder and some garlic powder and then my celery seed. So I'm gonna put that in there first. 
And then I'm gonna put my salt in there. And then I'm gonna drop my carrots in. I'm gonna try to make a ring around here. So now that I've got it all in there, isn't that pretty? I'm gonna use my pickle packer really press it down and then I'm gonna put some non chlorinated water in there filtered water And then I'm gonna put my weight in there to hold everything down. And then I'm gonna put my pickle pipe. And my band. And I'm gonna sit it on the counter. It needs to be between 65, 72, 73 and let it sit for four to 10 days. It'll be bubbling during those days. You wanna check it every day, make sure it's bubbling. If you get any um, scum or foam, you can simply take that off. If you need to top it back off with some water, you can do that. But we'll check back in about 10 days and see how this tastes.